No debate, as far as the Quran is concerned, to sum up, the Spirit is not a created angelic being. Mm. The Spirit is distinguished from all angels. The Spirit is breathed out from Allah, so He's an eternal, mm. inseparable mm. part of Allah. Mm. The Spirit is subject to Allah. The Spirit creates and gives life like Allah does, and the Spirit can appear as a man, can speak and be spoken to. In other words, the Quran affirms the Spirit is an eternal, divine person, inseparable from Allah. What's going on everybody, this is your boy Albert, man. I'm coming at y'all with another reaction video and today I'm coming at y'all with episode number three, part three, with Sam Shamoon and Al Khadid, where Sam Shamoon is breaking down how Allah really is portrayed in the Quran and not what people may think, that he may have more personhood than we think. Maybe he's just not just one person. Maybe he is three. Maybe there is Allah, the quote unquote big Allah, and then the son Allah, and all these other things, and then the spirit too. But let's get into it. Let's see what they're really talking about, man. Let's learn something. The series we began on what the Quran says about mm -hmm. the Spirit. And again, I just want to make clear, I'm not trying to prove that the Spirit of the Quran is the same Spirit revealed in the Holy Scriptures. Heavens I don't believe that. I believe the Quran is a counterfeit concocted by Satan. Facts. Facts. Let's put that out there first, man. Just because what he's doing, I think he's just showing you guys that are Muslims that, hey, or anybody who doesn't necessarily agree that uh, uh, the uh, uh, Muslim God is different than, you know, the true God, is that, yo, Y'all don't really know what y'all talking about. That's what I'm getting from this particular series. It's like Breaking it down, if you really look into it and you really logically think about it, it's more closer to this than what y'all really think. Where Satan inspired Muhammad to preach a false Jesus, a false mm. spirit, a false gospel, and present a mm. false God to mislead people from the true God. My aim is to show the Muslims who do believe in the Quran that the Quran does not teach Tawheed. So I just want to be clear. I don't want people to think that I believe, hey, the Holy Spirit of the Quran is the Holy Spirit of the Bible. To me, that's blasphemous. That is true. It's a counterfeit, a satanic counterfeit trying to replace the true spirit with a counterfeit one. So may the Lord Jesus save Muslims from this satanic counterfeit and bring them into the truth of the gospel that he proclaimed Amen. <clears throat> so they can be saved. Now, with that said, we have demonstrated that the Quran does teach that Allah's spirit Though distinct from Allah, distinct. subordinate to Allah is mm -hmm. fully God because he can do things that only God can do and he's a person. He can appear as a man, which by the way is interesting because Muslims want to tell you that it is beneath the glory and majesty of Allah to appear as a man or become a man. However, Allah's own spirit, whom he breathes out, who comes out of him, who's part of him, can appear as a man. So if it's beneath the dignity of Allah to appear as a man, then what are they saying about the Spirit of Allah? That the Spirit of Allah did something that was inglorious, mm. something that was shameful, but for the Spirit to appear as a man, and yet Allah d won't appear as a man. Yo, let me know. Let me know. People out there, Muslims out there, what y'all got to say? What y'all got to say about this? Let me hear it, man. Whether you're using your Quran, your Hadith, uh, whatever. What do you got to say about this? Because what Brother Sam's talking about makes sense to me. That how in the world is a, a power or something from Allah can enter in creation, but not either be Allah or be not as graceful or not as you know holy because it's entering in its creation, which it shouldn't. And speaking of that, I reacted to a video not too long ago with Brother Guy Logic, and he was talking about how uh, Allah uh, reached down and raised Jesus up with him. How do you reach down? Let me know in the comments. And are you saying that the Spirit is beneath Allah, even though he's inseparable from Allah? So a part of Allah does something and glorious to shame Allah? So that's another problem, another dilemma for the Muslims. What I want to focus right now in this particular session is to show from the Quran that the spirit cannot be Gabriel because the spirit cannot be an angelic creature because that's what they'll tell you. Muslim scholars will tell you the spirit is the angel Gabriel. We're going to prove from the Quran that cannot be the case. So if mm. you don't mind, if you can go to chapter 16, verse 2 of the Quran and read for us right. what 16, verse 2 says about the spirit's relationship to the angels. And I'm going to be reading like uh, from Pechthel, for instance, and it says, he, speaking of Allah, sends down the <coughs> angels with the spirit That's right. of his with command right. unto whom he will of his bondmen saying warn mankind that there is no god save me so keep your duty unto me now did you catch it he sends the angels with the spirit by his command in other words allah orders and commands the angels and the spirit to come down so this again shows two things 
The angels are a distinct group, a distinct category from the spirit. That's correct. Because if the spirit was an angel, why exclude him, differentiate him from the angels? Why not include him in that category? The fact mm. that it says the, the angels with the spirit shows they're not the same category being. But it also shows that the spirit is subject to Allah because Allah orders the spirit, mm. commands the spirit. So the spirit can only come down when Allah orders him, though the spirit is breathed out by Allah and inseparable from him. So those are the two facts. Hold on, inseparable? Time out. Time out. Help me out. How's it inseparable? But he gave it to somebody. He gave it to angels. He gave it to multiple angels. But yet, everything from Allah is supposed to be him and uniquely him. But yet, he's giving it out to people. Help me make it make sense, y'all. Help me. Help me understand how that could be. How? Is that partialism? Does Allah have parts? Is he able to peace and give himself out to different angels? Be like, yo, you get this one, you get this one, you get this one. Is Allah parts? Is Allah parts? Let me know, man. Let me know. Is he parts? By the way, I'm gonna be playing with this. I got this new soundboard, so randomly, I'm not used to it, but y'all gonna hear some just random sounds. Just throwing that out there. We established from this passage. Now, this is not the only passage. There are other passages that affirm that the spirit is distinct from the angels and that both mm. angels and the spirit have to obey the commands of Allah. Can you go to chapter 70, verse 4 of the Quran? Chapter 70, verse 4 reads as follows. To him, this is Arbery's translation, to him the angels and the spirit mount up in a day whereof the measure is 50,000 years. So again, we have the angels on one side and the spirit differentiated from them, right? That's correct. The angels and the spirit. Now again, if the spirit is an angel, then he should be part of this category, this group of angels, because it says angels in general, not some angels angels as a whole and yet the spirit is distinguished from them showing the spirit is not an angel but different from them now this is again oh wait let me try that again y'all whoa who the fuck is, is not the only passage let's go to 7838 78 uh, 38 reads on a day when the angels and the spirits stand arrayed they speak not saving him whom the uh, benefi uh, beneficent allowed and who speaks right. So again, angels and the spirit, two different categories. The angels one side, the spirit on the other side, and again affirms that the spirit with the angels is subordinate, subject to Allah. Now, angels are creatures, so by their very nature, they're subject to Allah. But here's what's ironic. The spirit is breathed out by Allah. So he's an eternal part of Allah. He's not part of creation. That's correct. And yet at the same time, the spirit is subject to Allah. It almost sounds like there's a hierarchy within the Godhead of Islam. And our Muslim friends are up in arms when we show that Jesus the Son submitted to the will of the Father. Yeah, or the Holy Spirit in the Bible is also right. subject to the Father and the Son. So now That's here right. we have a hierarchy within the Godhead of Islam. The spirit breathed out by Allah, so he's an eternal, inseparable part of him, not part of creation, mm. creates, gives life, appears as a man, can speak and be spoken to, and yet he is subject to the command of Allah. And yet we're told that... Yo, man, let me know what's going on. Muslims, it seems everything's piling up to go against what y'all truly believe. And y'all get mad at us. Y'all say what we believe ain't logical, but it looks like a lot of things are... Closer than what they appear. They're in that side mirror, creeping up, creeping up. I wonder if Sam Shamoon, let me know in the comments, is Sam Shamoon like the first person to really break this down like this? Um, or is there like others that broke this down and kind of like, uh, whether they be apologetics or even, you know, ex Muslims who are now Christians, breaking down like this idea when it comes to the Quran and what it really may be saying? I don't know yet. This is just the first I've heard of it and seen of it. Um, so let me know in the comments, is there others that are doing the same thing? Islam teaches absolute pure monotheism. Now, that's not the only passage. So far, three passages, right? right. Let's go for a fourth one. Chapter 97, verse 4. 97, verse 4 reads as follows. The angels and the spirit, here we go again. The angels and the spirit descend therein by the permission of their Lord, by the leave of their Lord, mm -hmm. with all decrees. So again, we find the same thing that we saw in the other passages. The spirit 
one side, angels on another side. They're not the same category or class of being. They're distinct, proving the spirit cannot be an angel. But at the same time, the spirit, like the angels, has to come down by permission of Allah. So he's subject to the will, command, and order of Allah. Right. I don't think you get any clearer than this, or do you? There's actually another passage that's even more explicit. Chapter 17, verse 85. And this one is very interesting, by the way, 1785. And here is the setting. <clears throat> Muhammad was asked, actually, by people, tell mm. us who is the spirit. Yeah, and it says, ar the spirit. That's right. Mm. Not just the spirits in general. So, Sam, this would have been the perfect moment right. for the prophet of Islam to say, it's Gabriel. Exactly. Why is everybody... You know, <laughs> What's the the debate? That's right. So, here is what it reads. They are asking thee concerning the spirit. Say, the spirit is by command of my Lord and of knowledge ye have been vouchsafed but little. Let's read the Arbery translation. They will question thee concerning the spirit. Say, the spirit is of the bidding of my Lord. Mm. You have been given of knowledge nothing except wow. a little. So wait, again the spirit is subject to the command of Allah, and when he's asked the identity of the spirit, he says, we only know a little about the spirit. In other words, don't ask too much about the spirit's identity because we don't know. Muhammad doesn't know. Like you said, the perfect opportunity for Muhammad to have said Gabriel, he didn't. He said, we only know a little about the spirit, so stop probing about the identity of the spirit. End of story. If a Muslim wants to insist, he basically the spirit is Gabriel, Hey y'all, he basically said, man, hey yo, sit down, shut up, I'm tired of asking all these questions. Y'all got all these questions, asking why, 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 because I, I said that's why. That means he knows more than his own prophet, because his own prophet, when asked, says, we don't know much about the spirit. Now let's put the icing of the cake to end this particular aspect of the Tawheed dilemma. Not only did you see mm -hmm. <clears throat> those passages where the angels are distinguished from the spirit, or where Muhammad says that when it comes to the spirit, we don't know much about him. We have a passage in which we have Allah distinguished from the angels. Go to chapter 89, and if you can. Chapter 89, verses 21 to 22. 89. 21 to 22. 21 and see what it says there. To hey, 22. To and uh, Bechtel? Have... Yes, fine. Mm -hmm. All right. What does it say? And we will go there yeah, right we're... now, and I'll tell you. Here's what it says. Nay, but when the earth is ground to atoms, grinding grinding and thy lord shall come with angels rank on rank safan safa and know, actually basically. the word safan was also used in 7838 where the spirit and angels will stand in ranks now which muslim would deny that their lord thy lord muhammad's lord is not an angel because here it says thy lord with the angels two That's different right. categories right exactly, exactly but when the same language is used of the spirit the angels and the spirit the spirit and the angels why then would they assume that the spirit is an angel when clearly the spirit is distinguished from all angels in the same way that Allah mm. is distinguished from all angels? Not only that, but there is one verse, for instance, where it says, who is the enemy of Allah, his angels? Gabriel, you know, Michael. Michael. I mean, you have like different categories yes. that are being distinct from so, each other. So, no debate, as far as the Quran is concerned, to sum up, the spirit is not a created angelic being. Mm. The Spirit is distinguished from all angels. The Spirit is breathed out from Allah, so He's an eternal, mm. inseparable mm. part of Allah. Mm. The Spirit is subject to Allah. The Spirit creates and gives life like Allah does, and the Spirit can appear as a man, can speak and be spoken to. In other words, the Quran affirms the Spirit is an eternal, divine person, inseparable from Allah. Amen, brother. I think uh, uh, hopefully our uh, viewers, uh, uh, you know, have uh, got the point so far. If, if you're a Muslim watching mm. us and we really... Uh, enjoy having you. We appeal to you to go and examine these very passages that we just shared. And now don't go and read a commentary that was written 300 and 400 and 700 years after the Quran was revealed, supposedly. Because everything that you are believing in comes from men, mere men who are telling you what you ought to think don't and how you that. ought to think. We want you to use what God has given you the gift of logic, the gift of reasoning. Uh, God has given us a brain to be able to utilize in issues like this. And we want you to go examine it for yourself, see the contradictions oh. from then within the teaching itself. You're told one thing about when Allah is distinct from angels, but yet you're told another when the same kind of uh, formula, if you wish, is used in these passages. Let and if you are someone who is- indeed, Again, breaking down the distinctions between the spirit, Allah, and the angels and showing that 
Allah might be, you know, when you just take the Quran for what it is, he might be a little bit different than how these Hadith writers and scholars claim he is. Um, you know, they talk about he's just one and he's greater than everything. He can't enter creation, but yet there's a spirit. Uh, they talk about he's just one, but yet it seems like he has parts to him. Man, sounds like there's a lot of heresy going on just within the own, your own Quran. But let me know in the comments what's really going on. Talk to you, boy. If they're wrong, let me know. Let me know. Uh, if you're new, I appreciate you for watching up to this point. If you've been here before, man, you already know I got love for you. You know I do. You know I do. Um, you know I'll be in the comments, too. So whatever you want to comment, I'm going to be there. We're going to be there talking together. Uh, I do have a goal that I want to reach 1K subs. And when I do, I'm going to start live streaming. Uh, and I'm going to start bringing Christians on um, of all different types, of all different doctrines, um, so that they can share their testimony and also so they can have a, a Q&A afterwards. So that's one of the things I want to do once I get my, uh, my goal. So help your boy out. Like and share this. Appreciate you guys. Catch you guys next time. I'm out.